Welcome to another Artist Opus video. We are covering a heavily requested topic of how to paint bone in this one. We've got bone in three different ways and we're using both contrast, shade and dry brush. I've also got a couple of really useful hints and tricks on how to get the best out of the paints that people often use to paint bone with because sometimes they can go a little bit grainy. You've got Zandri just there. Um, you don't want to get that kind of gritty finish. Uh, there's a few simple tricks to do it. I'm also covering um, using exactly the same techniques, if you want to repeat them a bit more, how you can get pretty fancy end results using exactly the same techniques and principles. It just involves, you know, taking a few more steps. So that is it. Without further ado, let's jump in. Before we begin, I'm going to share a top tip. Um, Citadel's base paints have incredible coverage. They also have a slight propensity towards getting a bit grainy um, and being a bit dryish in, in terms of their look or their behavior. There is a very simple way to fix that. If you're ever working with something that says base on it, if you mix a tiny amount um, or any amount of a layer in, then it makes it behave much more readily, you know, smoothly. You're gonna slightly lower the coverage, but these things have nuts coverage anyway. I mean, that's two coats of Celestra Grey uh, there. The coverage is insane, so you don't have to worry about that, but mixing any layer in of any color, doesn't have to be from GW, is a really useful way to, you know, kind of get rid of that uh, slightly uh, unwanted characteristic. So let's put that into practice. Now I'm not using one of my newest brushes here because the base paints are pretty heavy, um, both in terms of, you know, well, heavy is just the word that describes them. They are heavy bodied, um, they quite easily do heavy applications and they can cause a couple of issues. Um, for a couple of reasons with, uh, you know, beating up your brushes a little bit. So I tend to reserve base coating with them, especially for my brushes that are slightly older. I'm just gonna stipple this base coat. So second coat, there we go. You can see even diluted um, with another paint that is pretty much perfect two coat coverage. Really, really, really fast. The joys of stippling. Our next step is to take any brighter color and we're going for high contrast here and give it a soft, he says, try again, a soft kind of global buffing dry brush. You could jump straight to white here, it really wouldn't matter. Um, high contrast is absolutely fine. We are going to be putting a contrast paint over the top of this or a wash of some type depending on what method you're going for. So build it up in a couple of stages. We are ready for our wash. It's got skeleton hold on our palette. Snake bite leather is a lot more potent, a lot more saturated. So I'm just going to take a little dot. And that's really going to help inform how it kind of the vibrancy of what it's going to do on this model. Gonna remove most of it. Doesn't count if I go quick, right? Sorry, viewers. Pop a bit of medium in there. Then we're just going to slap that down. Now I'm not looking to go too heavy with this. I'm using a big fat, I think this is a size four. So I don't even need to go back to the palette. Wonderful brushes. I do prefer working with big brushes for washes. And what I'm actually gonna do is, I think this is what really makes a difference between, you know, kind of high end and uh, more basic contrast uses. I'm now gonna selectively pick out which bits I want to be heavier, lighter, that type of thing. So if I see a cool detail, for example, we've got some awesome details there in the bone that have been picked out really nicely. If I want that to happen here, I can just drop it in. If I want less there, I can pull it out. If I want all of the parts where there is that string, rope, whatever it is there to be picked out, I can run against those. So push against them, lift off at the point where you want it the darkest. It is up to you where your contrast goes, how much of it is there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you take the opportunity to control it. Now highlighting this is up to you. We've kind of gone through a, a slightly warmer bony spectrum. I've got a little bit of Carrick stone here. I'm going to mix a tiny amount of our contrast in with it. It's quite a thick paint anyway, so I'm, I'm not worried about it getting too much thinner. And then any light paint on your palette, therefore addition is useful. So take a little bit of that Carrick stone. It is too dark how it is. That's not going to work particularly well. So do a little bit of mixing. And then softly, softly, we're just going to repeat. Exactly that same buffing method. 
Take your time with this, it'll go really fast, there's no need to try to hurry it up. And then rather than going back to the palette, go to the dampening pad. Work that in a little bit and just use that to help the exit of paint. Beautiful, so that is the contrast and dry brush method. Here we have the Zandri dust base. I'm just gonna take the Carrick Stone mix with our highlight color that we used from our previous one. Now, what I want to do with this is hit quite a lot of it. So this is not too much heavier, but it is a heavier approach, being slightly more heavy handed. I'm trying to hit, I'd say like 50% of the ray of the model um, which is going to be the raised areas obviously because we're dry brushing I'm trying to hit it with a pretty blocky holistic overbrush you'd say this is a, an overbrush is kind of like a heavy handed dry brush one more final highlight of just our highlight color now obviously we've got our previous mix in the bristle still so that is going to have an effect so for this one i'm going to try something that perhaps isn't what people would expect with bone. I'm going to be using Seraphim Sepia, you know, fairly, fairly normal, but I'm actually going to be mixing in a little bit of Reclam Flesh Shade. And the reason for that is I want this to be a warm bone. I've washed my brush thoroughly because the contrast paints are strong, particularly snake bite. So there's our Reclam. Here's our Sepia, going about 50-50. Now what I'm going to do, I always bang on about this. I've got a texture palette here to be used. I can test exactly how it's going to behave over similar colors. I'm cool with that. It's kind of a warm bony. Just put a little, a little touch more seraphim in there. Now you can use medium as much or as little as you want with this. I'm just showing you the one way to do it, but you know how much you do the pre-dry dry brushing, how heavily contrasted the pre-dry brushing is, all of that stuff you can change. And of course you can do it with, you could do it with two thin coats. Um, cheers, Dunk. Uh, with the medium inside this wash and that might give you a softer you know more gentle result looking good though so just for contrast got a previous one a little bit more dry and then this should have a little bit more warmth to it and a little bit more depth so finally we have our celestial gray base now this color obviously is a lot more stony uh, than we're expecting it's also cool so this bone is going to be very very different in terms of its traits than our previous two the ivory we're using is a bright ivory so it's actually quite low in the brownie hues that you'd get in a lot of ivories making care putting celestra into this brush it's a heavy paint as i've touched on numerous times so what we're looking to do here is give it a, a an overbrush coat and then we're going to slowly make it brighter and brighter for a couple of steps. But we do want this to be, you know, ancient bone. That's the idea of it anyway. And then for this one, I'm actually gonna go all the way up to white. Make sure on my palette from all angles, that's not too much. And then what I'm gonna do is because obviously we've got quite a lot of color built up in this brush, I'm just gonna jump to a different one Slightly bigger here. I'm just gonna give that a final buff up of that white. Time for another top tip. So generally speaking, um, in the past at least, before we had, you know, wonderful contrasts, um, if people were using a wash for skeleton bone, they'd pick something like Agrax Earthshade. Personally, if I'm looking to do something, especially on skeletons or something like that, I want it to be slightly tinted um, with a, you know, a brownie hue, but I want the recesses to be dark. So rather than picking an Agrax, I'm going to make something that in terms of its, um, its tone is similar, but I'm going to mix a softer, lighter brown, and then I'm going to mix it with a black. Now this black should do its work in those recesses, you know, pushing the contrast, and then this uh, is going to tint stuff less on the raised areas. So I'm going to mix these together and hopefully we'll get some wonderful properties. Obviously null oil is stronger so there is a good chance that we need to pop in proportionally a bit more of the brown. So that's what I'm talking about there, that type of colour. I'll put some Agrax on the palette just to show. Similar but different. I prefer working with this type of colour quite a lot in these circumstances and I'm going to grab a little bit of medium. And off we rock. Now 
Now what I'll do on this one is I'll go far lighter to show you what it looks like. So I'm using exclusion here. I've put down my wash and then I've removed a load of it from my brush. And because the, I'm using the big fat size four with its big belly, I can go in there and I can pull away whatever I do or don't want there. This is useful if you're planning on using multiple layers of washes because you know I could put down this and then I could put down like a selective black wash or I could have done that the other way around, you know, done a selective black wash just in the recess or something like that and then drop this over the top to fade out transitions uh, and make that easier for me. So I think I actually am gonna do an additional wash stage so get some null oil. Just grab a tiny bit of our previous mix, a little bit where we had the medium in there, remove quite a lot of the excess and then selectively I'm going to exaggerate some of the deeper sections. So hopefully this nicely demonstrates the myth that you know you don't need a tiny brush to do selective or detailed work, particularly with washes because they're so wet they're just going to run into the recesses and I actually prefer to be holding a lot of my mix in my bristles you know to not have to go back to my palette. It's faster but also I know how this is behaving. I've got the exact right mix here I'm cool with it and I could do probably maybe four of these shields, I guess, four or five of them potentially in this fashion without having to go back to my palette. And for me, that holds quite a lot of value. I've always loved selective washes as a technique. I think people have forgotten about this stuff a little bit due to the, uh, the exciting joys of contrast, but it is super, super powerful. So what we've done there, it's kind of like I've highlighted the, um, the white sections. I could have done a dry brush before doing this, um, you know, you can go backwards and forwards with those techniques as much as you wish. And indeed you could, and I probably will do a final dry brush afterwards. So here I can exaggerate those brown sections by popping some even darker dots in the recesses. This bit here, if I'm feeling it's a bit lacking in shading, can push it this way, can remove it with a finger, super flexible. And basically it looks like I've done highlighting there. I haven't, I've done selective shading, but you know, it's all about contrast. I never shut up about getting contrast in on your miniatures, that's got a really, really good effect done in that fashion. So to demonstrate what we're talking about, I've got our middle shield, I've got a baby D. With the size of this brush, I can pretty-ish accurately pick out the ropes. So I'm even gonna take a little bit of white, mix it in with that ivory. And then using angles carefully, I'm going to selectively dry brush them. Doesn't matter too much if I hit the ends of the bones, they could be brighter anyway. So they've been dry brushed. And then we can do exactly the same thing that we just did. As ever with this type of tutorial, it's all about giving you a load of options and then you can combine them as much as you want. And I would always encourage the combining, I think it's where you get the real wins in terms of interest or enjoyability and um, you know also efficiency. If you're taking the best properties of a couple of things, generally speaking, it can go really nicely. There we go. As you can see, I have added uh, just some detailing there. I wanted to do that to show you how much of a difference it makes to the piece. Remember, if you put something really, really bright here, like practically white, like I have on the rope, it will make other stuff look darker in comparison. So it's, it's just something really important to bear in mind. If you do something and you think like, oh, you know, whoops, that's all far, far too bright. If you just put something even brighter dotted around it or next to it or anything like that, it will make everything else look darker in comparison. So if I wanted this stuff to look darker, I could put white there. And indeed, if I wanted it to look brighter, I could carefully, you know, like wash these super black and then just paint them with a dark brown or a, you know, really dark green or gray or something like that. You could absolutely use uh, greens, uh, in particular purples, they look quite nice on bone, to wash into these to add depth. What I wanted to show you was, if you take these concepts, what you can do. So uh, here, in exactly the same way that I have specifically pushed washes into certain areas on the ones that I painted before, I've repeatedly pushed washes into the recesses more and more and more on these bones, dry brushed it several times, gone backwards and forwards, and that is where we've got that kind of deep bony depth from on those from him. So yeah, it's a, it's a technique you can absolutely use on larger models. If anything, it's easier on larger models, especially like if you've got uh, Osiok bone reapers or something like that, 
and they've got really large, big, beefy bones. You can use larger dry brushes. You have more space to fit in more steps. And um, you know you can achieve some pretty incredible results pretty fast. Also, contrast and washes. Do make sure that you don't let them pull too much, and you put some medium in there with them. And be be willing to put in you know two medium coats rather than one thick coat. It's not a race always, and uh, that will really help you know get a nice smooth result. And remember that if anything doesn't go perfectly, if you put a dry brush over that or you put other stuff over that, you will at least partially, if not fully, obscure those those issues and you can add more washes into the recesses and add more highlights to the raised areas and that will all, that will all push it. Um, so as you can see here, on a smaller scale, in exactly the same type of chunky destruction bones, I've pushed the washes in there. This is exactly what I've done on these. Okay, so I just thought I would demonstrate specifically the type of thing that I'm talking about. I've got some Reclam Flash Shade on my brush. I'm just using this to bring some more warmth and depth to my piece selectively. You could wash it all over it, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be a bad thing at all and if you want an all over effect then that's absolutely fine. I'm going to see initially at least what it looks like if I just keep mine to the recesses. Now obviously you could do this none or some or loads, you know, as much or as little as you like. It's entirely up to you how you want to approach your own thing. I just wanted to really, you know, push in the fact that you can, these principles you can take and basically the, the way to get a high result is just to repeat them. You know, their transparent techniques or their non-opaque techniques in the case of the dry brushing, it doesn't completely coat your thing. So because of that, you can go backwards and forwards as much as you like until you are completely satisfied with whatever your end result is. I really quite like the one that started from Celestra Grey. I would actually be tempted to wash that with a green, you know, just a hint of green in there. I think that works really nicely with bone, as I'd said. A couple of things that I've said, but just to really, you know, round them home, uh, mix in a layer with your base paints if you want them to go on more smoothly. They've got amazing coverage anyway, you don't need to worry about that. And so rather than, you know, obsessing over 1.5 coat coverage instead of two coats coverage, which is pretty much the same thing as far as painting goes, make sure you get a nice smooth coat and that will make your paint jobs go beautifully, especially if you are washing or using contrast afterwards because they will pick out any grainy textures that you've ended up with there. If you want stuff to look fancy, exactly the same principles, you know, just repeat them a few more times. Uh, the spiky horns on this guy were done. I specifically painted the striations on them, but they were done using similar techniques with the washes. Uh, you know, just I just follow the texture with my brush. You can use it on larger models really easily. Uh, soften your washes and maybe go twice and make sure to not let it pull too much in the recesses. You know, be active with your your really liquidy washes and uh, contrast paints. You know, don't let them go anywhere too much. And if you want them somewhere more, just nudge them in that direction. Use a nice big brush with, with a good point. You know, don't use a crappy one. That is it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, hope you found it useful. If you would like me to cover another fundamental technique next, then please pop your suggestions below. We do read each and every one of them and we are trying to get through them. Uh, Bone has been requested for a long time, so I hope you find that useful and we will catch you in the next video. You may notice there's a dude down there. I am gonna be getting to that fairly shortly. I'll catch you in the next video, bye.